So today we're going to talk to you about building high-quality apps and games with Firebase. So today, building high-quality apps has never been more challenging. When you're building for so many different countries, each with their own set of devices, languages, and carriers, how do you know when your app is ready to launch? And after you launch, how do you monitor your application to make sure it's stable and performant in production? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. But first, why is this even important? It's important because the data shows that the quality of your application has a direct impact on your business. Slow and crashy apps mean bad user reviews, and bad reviews mean lower trust in your application and ultimately fewer users and fewer lower revenue. In fact, a recent analysis of Google Play Store reviews shows that 50% of the time when a user, 50% of one-star reviews mention app stability and bugs as a problem, and on the flip side, 60% of five-star reviews mention speed, design, and usability. So the data here speaks for, yourself, speaks for itself. If you have a low-quality app, your users will notice, and it will impact your business. So how do we build high-quality apps? Well, it looks pretty straightforward on paper. You build the core functionality of your application. You test it either manually or ideally in an automated fashion. You launch and distribute it in the App Store and then you actively monitor it to make sure there's no problems. And you take those learnings and you repeat. But in reality, we know that this is very difficult to do without the right tools. And so at Firebase, we have, a, we have some great tools to make your life easier. We focus specifically on the test and monitor phases of your life cycle. And before you launch, we have something called Firebase Test Lab, which helps you test your app against a variety of devices to make sure it's in good shape before you launch. Then we also have tools that help you monitor your application after you launch in production. So we have crash reporting, which helps you find uh, errors and crashes in production and alerts you of new and regressed clusters. It also helps you find the root cause of the problem by giving you stack traces and helping you identify what actually caused the problem. I mean, crashes are a big problem, but often the problems that are toughest to diagnose are performance issues. So what's causing your app to be slow and why? So we're really excited to tell you about our new product, um, Firebase Performance Monitoring, in just a minute. So let's talk about Firebase Test Lab. So Firebase Test Lab is a physical and virtual device lab in the cloud. We know most developers only have access to a few devices to test their app on. So our goal is to give you easy access to a wide variety of devices that represent your user base. And that's why we're constantly adding new and popular devices from around the world. When you run a test, you can choose a combination of devices, OS versions, and languages to make sure that your app is going to work well for your user base. And we're also aiming to have the latest developer previews in our lab so you can make sure that you're supporting the latest Android features with confidence. Now, every developer has a different workflow, so we have different ways to access the test lab. You can use the web console, the command line interface, and even Android Studio. And we, we also support popular testing frameworks like Robotium, Espresso, and UI Automator. Now, what if you don't know much about testing or you haven't had a chance to invest in test automation? That's exactly why we built Robo. So Robo is an intelligent app crawler that will find crashes and layout issues for you, and you don't have to write a single line of code. All you have to do is upload your APK, choose what devices you want to run on, and it will crawl your application. And while it does that, it'll record a video, take screenshots, capture device logs, and even stack traces for any crashes it might encounter. Here you can see how Robo's crawling the IO17 application. Robo also powers the pre-launch report on the Play Developer Console. So a lot of you probably have used this in the past. This is available at no cost to you. It's a limited set of devices that Play will automatically run your app on if you participate in the alpha beta channel. It's a great way to try the product um, at no cost. 
Now, we know many of you who do invest in testing like to run on every push and commit. So we have integrations with some really popular CI tools like Jenkins and Travis. In fact, we have really great partners like Amex and Walmart that are using Test Lab in this way. In fact, Walmart recently op open sourced two amazing tools for the community. The first one is Flank, and Flank lets you shard and throttle a large number of tests against our Test Lab. This is one of our most requested features, so we're really excited that Walmart built it before we even did um, and made it available to the community. And the second one is coming soon. It's called Shifu, and it lets you mock. Um, it's a mocking tool that lets you mock your database or your data and network requests so you can build a hermetic test suite. So if you have a CI environment and you test on every build and you're struggling with device compatibility testing, Firebase Test Lab has, a great, has some great options for you. And that's Firebase Test Lab. So last year at I.O., we launched Firebase Crash Reporting in beta. And Firebase Crash Reporting monitors your application and then alerts you when you have crashes um, and other non-fatal issues. Now, the key here is we wanted to do more than just identify the crash. We wanted to help you reproduce issues. So what we did in the fall of last year was integrate with Google Analytics for Firebase to show you what your user is doing in your app before the crash. And this lets you reproduce that in your own environment very easily, because we think that's kind of the most challenging part of fixing crashes. But this year, we have even bigger needs. So Firebase has joined forces with Fabric, as you've heard probably a couple times today. We're really excited about, we're really working hard right now to build, bring the best of both platforms together. And we're excited about Crashlytics because it's the best crash reporting service in the market. It's used by over 500,000 developers, and it gives really great real-time insights. And what we're excited about is we're bringing this to the Firebase community. So that means in the future, you can expect to get the entire Crashlytics experience right from the Firebase console. So if you're thinking about integrating a new crash reporting tool and you don't have one yet, we recommend Crashlytics. Um, but current, current Firebase customers don't have to worry. We'll upgrade you seamlessly to the new experience when it's ready, and we continue to support that service. And lastly, I wanted to talk about Firebase performance monitoring. So Firebase performance monitoring lets you see what's happening with your application as users are using it in production. We had two goals in mind when we built this product. One, we wanted to provide a ton of value out of the box without having to do anything. And the second thing is we wanted to make our insights actionable. So everything we show you, like give you a way to fix it, or at least debug it and diagnose it a little bit. So out of the box, just by installing the SDK, you get visibility into your app startup time and all of your network requests. And then, and then you can also instrument your own um, you can do custom instrumentation to diagnose specific parts of your application and time those. Now, whether you're using our, looking at our out-of-the-box out of insights or custom insights, we give you the ability to slice and dice the data in a number of different ways. So you can look at, you know, how does this particular, how does my app startup time look by carrier or by OS version or by app version? Um, so that really lets you kind of hone in on the problem. It's a really powerful tool, and we're going to be deep diving into it tomorrow at 4.30, right here. Um, so we hope you can join us for that. And now I'm going to hand it off to Justin. All right, thank you, Nolan. So I'm going to give a deeper dive into some of the newer features on Test Lab. So for some time now, we at Google have been stressing the importance of writing automated tests. So how many of you, raise your hands, how many of you write automated tests for every new feature in your application? All right. That's why we've given up nagging you. It doesn't work. So we are putting a lot more focus now into automating the crawl of your applications with the robo. We've already made improvements in this area in terms of the performance how, many how, how fast the crawler is, as well as the coverage, how many screens we can find, how many crashes we can find. But you can expect to see even more significant uh, improvements in the coming weeks and months. But there are always the deepest, darkest corners of your application that even our crawler cannot find. 
So with Espresso Test Recorder, you can, which is part of Android Studio, you can record a test by interacting with a device, a local device with your app, and upload that test to Test Lab, and thereby test those hard-to-reach parts of your applications. So Nalan talked about the new Firebase performance product, which gives you insights into how your application behaves in the wild. We on the Test Lab team believe it's equally important to understand how your application performs before it even gets into your users' hands. So, with every test that you run in Test Lab that runs on a physical device, we measure various performance metrics, such as CPU and memory and network. And we provide you those as part of your regular tool uh, test results, synced with the video. You'll see this in a demo later on. All right, who wanted more devices? Oh, come on, I'm going to ask it again. Who wanted more devices? Yes, that's better. All right. Yes, well, we now have more devices. We've added more of the newer devices. If you heard Francis talk, yes, we have pixels. Yes, we have S7s, S7 edges. We also have some of the older devices, more of the older devices. We also have a preview version of Android O running on the pixels. So now you can test out and integrate with some of those new features that Dave Burke talk, talked about at the keynote this morning. So we've known for a while that the quality of the network connection can really affect the usability and the reliability of your applications. And so with G Cloud in the release that follows I.O., one week after I.O., with G Cloud, which is our command line tool, you can now test your applications under a variety of different network conditions. Everything from LTE to Edge to GPRS and so on. You can even test it under degraded versions of those same network profiles. But what I am most excited to talk about today is our new support for testing games. So we've talked with many developers who are creating games for Android. And from those discussions, the key takeaway for me was that testing games is on Android is incredibly painful. And because I had gum surgery a few weeks ago, and that was incredibly painful, I immediately thought of this. And if there are any dentophobes in the audience, if you don't know what a dentophobe is, if there are any dentophobes in the audience, you can look away now. But this, unfortunately, is the, uh, anyway. So the, this, I think we all agree that this is the, the pain of testing games on Android. It's not quite the same pain as we see here. But given your feedback, given the, the, the discussions we had, it is almost as intense. So this person recognizes that there are thousands of different device types out there. And it's impossible to test on all those different devices. This person had to build five different versions of their game for Android, and then test each one of those separately. This person had a game which bricked a device that they did not even have in-house, a very important device. That, they, that the only thing they could do with was blacklist. And lastly, the thing that we heard most often was that it is hard just treading water, keeping up with all the different operating systems versions and releases. So what are we doing about this? And the dentophobes can now look back on the uh, screen again. So we're going to do a number of things, but I'm here really today to talk about just one of those things. Today, we are introducing a new framework for testing games on Android. So with this new framework, we allow developers to create game loops and trigger those game loops. So what is a game loop? Well, I'm sure most of you have been to an arcade, and while the games are not being played, they are running through a loop 
demonstrating their behavior. And that is essentially a game loop. So a game loop is a way of simulating a user interacting with your game. It can also be used as a way of stress testing a game, such as in a multiplayer situation, or focusing on a specific game component. Now, you can trigger game loops with this framework locally using an application that runs on the device that we've written. That application is freely available to you. You'll find it by going to our website, our documentation for Code for Test Lab, and you search for Game Loop, and you'll find a reference to it. That is freely available to you. You can download that, run it on a local device, and trigger the Game Loop. But what is more important is that we've added support for Game Loops in Test Lab. So now, you can, with Test Lab, simultaneously test your games, triggering game loops, across any of the devices that we have in our device fleet and ex expose problems, problems such as crashes or memory leaks, or probably more importantly, graphics performance issues. So to help us understand how this works, I am extremely, I mean this, extremely excited to welcome one of our partners up on stage with us. They'll be up in a second. Deep Silver Fish Labs. Deep Silver Fish Labs, who, as you probably know, is a world-leading developer of high-fidelity 3D games for smartphones and tablets. Their latest game, Galaxy on Fire 3 Manticore, released this morning, but it is, frankly, a benchmark of sci-fi shooting games. They have been testing a pre-release version of their game on Test Lab for some time now. And as I say, it released this morning, but I've been testing this game for a while. And I can honestly say that the last game that I was this addicted to was about 25 years ago. And I can see some raised eyebrows, the incredulous in the audience. Yeah, they did have computer games 25 years ago. So let me welcome up Andreas and Johannes on stage. Andreas is the director of <laughs> business, the director of business development and sales <laughs> Thanks, at Justin. Deep Silver Fish Labs. Welcome, Andreas. And Johannes is the head of core technologies, a lead developer at Deep Silver Fish Labs. Welcome, guys. All right, so we're going to start with you. Uh, Andreas, I think. Um, what do you see as the main advantage of the new support for testing games in, in uh, Tesla? Yeah, hey, thanks, Justin. Um, well, as you mentioned before, the, the challenge um, that, that we basically face is that um, we want to have our game running as, on as many devices as possible. So uh, um, what do we face? I mean, you're very, very successful with, uh, with Android, so uh, you have multiple OEMs. Um, deploying it on the devices. Uh, those multiple OEMs have um, multiple devices. So um, I think today, if you look into Google Play, you have like over 13,000 different devices um, with OS. So, so it's a big challenge. Um, we look into that and say, well, what's the market share and so on. So, so today, um, or up until the last uh, few months, basically, before using uh, Firebase Test Lab, we went out and try to purchase as many devices out there as possible. And uh, if you buy one of the latest uh, phones out there, it would probably cost you like $800. So imagine um, if we want to cover like 100 devices, how, it, how, how pricey that basically is. So, so that, that, that's one thing where uh, the Firebase Test Labs helps us, because um, as you just mentioned, um, you provide us with uh, test devices uh, that we can uh, run our game on. That's one thing. And by the way, um, we have this, this very, very little vault in our office uh, where uh, we stack 100 devices, but 100 devices are basically not enough. We are, or the goal that we have uh, for, for our game is that we want to cover like about 500 different devices um, worldwide to, to have a meaningful um, user base. So um, that, that's, that's one challenge. Um, the other one is um, that one device of one OEM might not have the same hardware inside 
in the US as in Europe or as in Asia. So what we, what we sometimes faced in the past was that um, we got a user reply saying, hey, um, it doesn't run on a XYZ device. And we tested it in, in, in Europe and said, well, it runs with us. But then we had to find out that they use a different GPU or a CPU. Right. Um, and, and how should we get, as a developer, uh, devices from Asia? So, so again, um, massively helped there. So, so, so that's something that, that basically helps us to, to overcome um, that, that challenge. And, and, and the research, I mean, the time that we put into research before, finding all that out, that hardware stuff, um, was immense. I think um, for, for Galaxy on Fire 3, we had uh, a product manager for about two months just searching um, databases of what's the device uh, market share in different countries to, to try to get those devices. So, so Firebase Test Labs really helps us there because we don't have to do that work anymore. We, we're, we're saving money, we're quicker. So That's great. And then how does this affect your overall launch process? <laughs> um, as, as, as you imagined, um, we're, we're quicker. So basically mm -hmm. three things. We're, we're, we're quicker uh, in, in getting the game out there. Um, it, it's more effective in terms of uh, QA and, and, and testing uh, in that sense. Um, and also we're more confident. I mean, as I mentioned, um, and, and you also, it could be that we have to blacklist a device earlier on um, that was a product that is, um, like has a market share of like 5% in Asia. Mm -hmm. Now, we're confident that we say, you know what, we don't want to blacklist it because we've tested uh, with Firebase test labs, uh, and we're confident. So, so we are quicker for, for QA, so development time is quicker. And, and I guess you all know that um, less development time means less budget. Um, so, so you can save budget on that one. Um, secondly, um, as had more confidence, we can, we can cover more devices. More devices means we make more gamers happy out there um, with a the product. They're there, they're playing it, um, they're writing great reviews on it uh, because they don't get bugs, they don't get crashes, um, and, and, and we're, we're more happy with that. And, and then, because we're quicker and we're more confident we're covering more devices, by the end of the day, and I'm, I'm biz dev in sales, we're making more money. And that's, that's what we want to do. Which is the point, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Andres. I really appreciate it. All right, Johannes, uh, you've been patiently waiting, I think, for, uh, to give us a demo, so please. Yes, finally. Uh, thank you, Justin. <laughs> Um, yeah, so for that I will need the MacBook. Um, I'm going to show you uh, how we added support for the game loop to our game Galaxy on Fire 3 Manticore. And we've been using the test lab for some time now and I'm very happy that it has helped us improve our game and also with the launch. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to declare your support for the game loop. And you do this in, uh, in your manifest. And for that I will just jump right into Android Studio. So the first thing we do here is we add an intent filter to, acti to our activity and the action's name is com.google.intent.action.testloop, and that's pretty much already all you have to do. You can add also add some more metadata here, like how many different scenarios you support, but we currently only support one, and in that case, that's not really required. The next step, then, is you need to check for this intent when your app starts, and we do this in our activity in the onCreate function here. We uh, get the intent, we get the action, and compare the action's name to the string we also saw earlier in the manifest. And then the only thing we do here is call this native function force performance test, which at, the, uh, which at this point basically only sets a flag in native code, which we then later check once our nat native code spins up in order to determine if the game should run in this game loop mode or not. So all the actually game loop implementation happens in native code where we load different locations and missions after each other in order to see if they work at all, uh, and also in order to determine their performance. So once that is done in native code, we hand back control to the activity by calling this native uh, notify performance test end function. And according to the game rule spec, all we need to do in order to finish or to show that we are done is call the finish function on the activity. And that's pretty much all you need to do for the implementation. The next, what you want to do is you will actually want to run the game loop. And as Justin said earlier, there is a little app on, that you can install on your device. So I will do a demo on the device now. Can we switch to the device? <laughs> yep. Yes. So this app is called Test Loop Apps, which I have installed here. So I will just tap that. And when it opens, it gives you a list of all the apps on this phone 
that support the, the intent we saw earlier. So currently, this is only our game at the time. Um, so I will tap that. Then it gives you a list of scenarios. And we currently have one, so there's not much to choose from. But quite important up here is that you can set the timeout, which defaults to three minutes, minutes which might be a bit short for the game loop, I guess. So uh, and then when that is done, you can tap on the Run button. And this will launch our game in game loop mode and starts loading the first location. And once the loading is done, we will see some action. Yeah, so this works. And then the next step is, or the next way to run the game loop is, you can also do this in the Firebase test lab. So we switch back to the MacBook for this. Um, so we go head over to the browser and Firebase and select the test lab on the left. So here you can see I did some tests before, which passed and some which failed. But we want to run a new test, so we click on the Run a Test button here. And the robot test and instrumentation test, those two are old. But what we want is the, the game loop here. So we click that. And the first thing we need to do here is select an APK. So I would just choose a very small one here, because now it does the upload. Um, and then you can also choose the scenario you want to run here. But we will we'll just go to the next page where you can select the devices and API levels you want to test on. So once you've selected that, you can click the Start button down here in order to launch the game in game loop mode on the selected devices in the Firebase test lab. Of course, the running of the game will take some time. So we, um, for the results, I will just choose one I did before. So for example, this one. So it gives you a list of all the devices that the test ran on. In this case, this is our Vulkan build of the game. So there are not that many devices, but we can look at the pixel, for example. On the first tab, it gives you a, some additional performance data that we ourselves generated during the run. But uh, here, you can also look at the logs, which is uh, mainly, uh, um, advantages, uh, mainly beneficial if there were any problems or crashes during the run. So you can figure out what went wrong. You can also look at the video of the run. But I will just skip over to the performance tab because we also have the video here and some additional performance data, like the CPU usage over time, the graphics performance measured in FPS here, the memory consumption, which doesn't really go up. So I don't think we have a memory leak in here, and the network usage as well. And the cool thing here is that you can actually click on the graph. So if we wanted to figure out why we have these frame drops here, we can click on it. And we see that the video jumps to that point in time, and we can play the video from there. And we see it's the loading screen. So it's not that bad that we have frame drops here. And once the loading screen ends, we see that the performance goes back up to the 30 FPS we are aiming for. So this is uh, running uh, the game loop via the, the Firebase console. But you can also use the run the game loop via the gcloud command line tool. And for that, I head over to the terminal. So this has the advantage that you can also use OBBs or APK expansion files, which for games you might often have. Or, and you can also easily integrate this into your continuous integration or build server setup. So there are different commands like, for example, you can get a list of the mm -hmm. devices in the test lab. Uh, this is basically the same list we also saw in the console earlier. But you can also start the test, for example, with this command. Um, you specify the type as the game loop. You can also specify the timeout here. You provide the name of the APK, the name of the OBB files. Uh, note the naming here that the OBBs already have to have the correct name. So they have to include the version code that is part of the APK. And you specify the devices and API levels and the orientation you want to run on. And once we run this command, it will start uploading the APK and the OBB files to uh, the test lab. And once the upload is done, it will start running the game loop on the selected devices. It will also give you a link to the, to the results in the Firebase console, so you can look at the results just like we earlier did. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You have to add the intent filter to your manifest, check for the intent on startup, implement some logic for the game loop in your native code, and then run using one of the three methods I just showed you. And with that, back to the slides. Thanks, Johannes. That was awesome. Um, that's how you use. <laughs> that's, 
that's how you use uh, the game loop feature of Test Lab. And so if you're interested in testing your games, please go to Firebase. More excitement, Marlon. Come on, look at her. She just ran a game loop. Come on, yes! Come on, yes! <laughs> I, well, clearly Justin's very excited. Um, yes, use game loops. Um, run them locally. Run them on Test Lab to make sure they work on your users' devices. Um, we're really excited to show this to you in person. Um, to recap quickly, um, I wanted to just recap what app quality tools we have in Firebase and how they work. So before you put your app in the hands of your users, make sure you, use them, make sure you test your app on Test Lab to make sure it works on all the right devices. Um, after you launch, you, you'll never catch all of the issues before you launch. So after you launch, make sure you monitor your application and its stability and performance with crash reporting. And then finally, um, use performance monitoring to see where your app is slow and why. And definitely tune in tomorrow for um, right here on this stage at 4.30 to get a deep dive into performance monitoring. It's a really exciting product, and we can't wait to show it to you. And then finally, come see us at the band at Sandbox. Johannes and Andreas will be there. You can talk to them about how they implemented the game loop. Um, we also have another game, Mecha Hamster, that's an internal game. Um, and we, we're happy to show you hands-on how we integrated game loops into these experiences. And come find us. We have the engineering team that will also be there that's excited to talk to you. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming, everyone. Have a great yeah. I.O. Thanks very much. Thank you.